Douglas here from Ignite Labs. In this video demonstration, I'll be walking you through the second level of the second CTF challenge offered by InfoSecInstitute.com. The URL for this is ctf.infosecinstitute.com forward slash CTF2. And the, C the levels can be accessed at the top left side in the levels menu. And again, this is going to be level two. And this is the second video in a small series of videos I'm going to be releasing as I find time to create them. So it looks like in this challenge we're presented with a simple web application, which is just a web calculator. And the web calculator takes simple input, three different inputs here. Uh, two numbers, which are operands. And if we right click on this and go to inspect element, we see that they're uniquely named op operand 1 and operand 2. The third input is the actual operator itself, which is from a drop-down menu. Now, if we read the description here, we see that some people had made this web application, and our job is to inject the PHP statement. So there's two keywords there that shows information about Apache and things like PHP version. The PHP version is the third clue. So we have three huge clues here. First of all, inject most likely means code injection. The, P, the PHP statement means it's one simple function call, most likely, or a simple PHP one-line statement. And the PHP version. The PHP version means that the actual code injection that we actually need to perform is most likely a call to the PHP function, PHP info. So after fuzzing this for a while, I realized that you can't put anything inside of these two input fields that aren't numbers. You can put real numbers like uh, floating point numbers, integers, uh, negative numbers, but as soon as you try to inject code in here or you try to put anything that's not a number, uh, you're presented with an error which says invalid operands. So what we need to actually exploit is the drop-down menu. So again, right-click, go to inspect element, and we see that the select document object right here uh, has all of these values here. So what I did next was I decided to search Google to see if I could find even more clues about this uh, because I was trying to think of it as a web programmer at the back end, like how they were actually handling the input from the user, which is all coming in through post, by the way, uh, HTTP post method. Uh, so they're actually handling it through the post scope, uh, which I'll show you actually in a second here with a little bit of TLDR after we actually hack this. So what I did was I searched PHP info and then code injection. Uh, after reading through a couple of the pages in Google, I landed on one that describes something with the eval function. And that right there was a red flag for me because eval obviously would work here because we're just adding two different, three, we're actually most likely interpolating three different values here, the operand one, the operator, and then operand two. So after reading through this page right here, which is exploit-db.com forward slash papers forward slash 13,694, uh, I realized that uh, it's definitely most likely going to be an eval statement. Uh, it looks like down here, uh, proof of concept number two shows that uh, PHP info call to the actual function is happening through a get request. This most likely, this mostly resembles what we're doing here, except we're doing, uh, like I said before, a post request. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit trickier. Whenever we're writing scripts to fuzz something, uh, we have to make sure that whatever mechanism we use to call the actual, make the HTTP request can actually handle things like post. So after reading through the page, I realized that all I really had to do was edit the HTML here and just basically put some code inside one of these here. But what I'm actually going to do is create my own. I'm going to call this something funny like waltz. And uh, just to show you here, value equals, and inside of the value equals is where we're going to put our code. Uh, so what I did was I put a single quote, a closing parenthesis, and a terminating uh, semicolon, and then I did php info call, uh, just regular PHP, PHP info call, and then I put, to, just to be safe, a pound symbol, which is going to make everything else in the actual PHP handler on this line right here become a comment. And you want to do that, like I said, to be safe, because if you break PHP, there's a huge chance that you won't be able to see the actual error output, because PHP.ini is usually now set by default to not even show errors, because uh, an attacker can glean a lot of information from PHP errors. So let's collect, let's select anywhere outside of this, and we'll see that Google Chrome did in fact add it into the DOM here. Oh, right, we actually have to put the name in here. I'm sorry. So what we do is uh, edit as HTML, and we're going to put a name here. Uh, we're going to get rid of this name right here, and we're actually going to put it here, L-U-L-Z. 
So now whenever we see that we pull down this drop-down menu, we'll see that it's there. Now we do lulls, then we do three, and then four, and hit calculate. We'll see that what happened was uh, it was successful. PHP info was in fact called, and it looks like the programmers for InfoSec Institute did anticipate this, and they either styled it or they're showing their own fake output here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you line by line how this actually works. And we could then Linux 6 does in fact have an HTTP uh, server installed by default, but it's not actually running. So you do init.d, etc, init.d, forward slash, like TTPD, and then start. And like I said, it does have PHP built directly into it. And the rib root is simply var www.html. So let's start off by creating a piece of an HTML page, which is just simply a form. So let's do vimform.html. And let's just simply create a form that does action equals uh, handler.php. And we're going to do, uh, let's see, method equals post. I'm going to show you how PHP, how you can actually access uh, things through the post scope uh, as they're being uh, sent in from the user. So let's go ahead and do input type equals text and name equals operand1. Let's see, we don't put a value, but we are going to put a line break to make this look nice. Okay, escape, yy, pp, and now we have three of those here. We need an input button. So input type equals submit, input button, I mean submit button, I'm sorry. Okay, so now that we have these three here, I'm going to change the actual operator. Well, first of all, let's change this to operand2 so we know what we're looking at, and change this to operator. And I'm going to actually change this from input equals text to input equals hidden, and then, or type rather, equals hidden, and then I'm going to change this to, I'm gonna hard code this as addition. So we'll just do value equals addition rather than create a big drop-down menu because that would take a lot of time here. Okay, so, this is our entire form here. Now we need to create the handler, which is shown up here as handler.php. Uh, the reason behind these videos, as I may have mentioned before, is that I want to give you, the penetration tester, a little bit of insight as to how these actual these vulnerabilities really work. And with this type of information, you'll be able to exploit the uh, eval or any type of uh, um, vulnerability with a lot more creativity. You'll be able to find them a lot faster and just be more efficient while doing your penetration test. So first of all, let's create a string. And what the string is going to equal uh, our special variable here, which is the associated array for our post parameters. This is exactly how uh, in PHP you can access the post, param the post parameters being sent in by the user. Okay, so our first post parameter was operand1. Our second was a hidden value, which was operator. And our third was operand2. Okay, so if we were to echo this string right here to the page, let's do this, VR, uh, it will display this. 3 plus 4, if we put in a 3 for operand 1 and a 4 for operand 2. Now, how does the eval function work? Well, let me show you the interface for eval function quickly right here. That's it. It basically takes a string and executes that as if it were PHP code. Now, the purpose of this is it allows interpolation. And what that means is you can have a string that's a, that has... Uh, say we have defined somewhere in our PHP code where equals world oops, and we have something like uh, a string that looks like this echo hello where if we were to pass this right here into the eval function it'll actually change this to world and it'll actually execute this echo hello world. Probably get syntax errors because we need something kind of like this here. We need to escape this and then we need to, uh, let's see, escape this and then concatenate this. But the, there's different ways that we can do this and I'm going to show you here how this actually works. First of all, let's just call eval and with eval, we want to pass 
string equals, and we put this in single quotes because we don't want to interpolate, we don't want to translate this string right here. We're going to concatenate string. And a terminator here also. Now we put this in double quotes because we do want to interpolate this. And now if we do echo string, uh, we'll see that this actually becomes uh, string will actually become 3 plus 4, which is 7. This is what the code looks like non-translated. String equals 3 plus 4. Actually, it's more like this. And then when executed, becomes this. And our echo will just be echo 7. And that's it. So let's go ahead and run this code in our browser and see how this pans out. So uh, the web server for localhost is 127.0.0.1 forward slash, and then we have form.html. I think that's what we called it. Yes, OK, so we do 3, and we do 4, and we hit submit. And what's going to happen is 3.3 plus 4 got echoed. That string that we created, which was just simply concatenating, this is our first echo statement right here, which basically just concatenated our first input, our second input, which was actually hidden, and our third input. So it would be three, and then our addition, and then symbol, and then four, which is perfect. That's what we see right here. Now the second, as we've shown here, eval actually executes this string right here. So how do we exploit that? Well, we want to change the actual string here in eval. And to do so, uh, all, all we did was pretty much in our uh, InfoSec Institute exercise was we did a string equals and then our three is going to have to be there no matter what. So we put a uh, actually what we did was this here and we actually whatever uh, eval statement that was that actually worked. What we're going to do is just do a semicolon to terminate that so that looks like its own right there and then we're going to do a PHP info call just like this. Actually, we don't even need that, the uh, comment here. So this is what we want our string to look like to be passed to eval. Now, how do we do that? Well, let's simply copy this here. Copy. And uh, go back to our form here. OK. And we're going to right click here and go to Inspect Element. And we're going to alter this to actually have our PHP info call right here. Let's see, edit as HTML. And rather than put a plus symbol, we're going to put this code that we just basically copied from what we want to be shown. Hit submit. And look at that. We have successfully executed the eval uh, function call flaw that was explained to you in exploit-db.com, which ultimately became the flag to capture in the second level of ctf.infosecinstitute.com uh, forward slash ctf2. Thank you.